before the last ice age ended, North America was a land of terrifying giants. And by the end of this video, you'll be glad that you only have to hear about them and not run into one. We're talking dire wolves, massive armadillo-like beasts, and colossal sloths. The mystery of why these animals vanished around 10,000 years ago keeps scientists on their toes to this day. So, in this video, we're looking at 15 creatures from prehistoric North America that would haunt your nightmares. Let's start with one animal that makes today's lions look like, well, overgrown kittens. This was the saber-toothed cat. Also known as Smilodon fatalis, this cat prowled North America from about 400,000 to 11,000 years ago. This feline weighed between 350 and 620 pounds, or 160 to 280 kilograms, stretching about 5.75 feet, or 1.75 meters from rump to snout. That's without even counting the tail. In comparison, today's African lions, Panthera leo, are its closest modern relatives in size. Like lions, Smilodon fatalis was a top predator, but its build was different. It had shorter, sturdier limbs, built more like a bodybuilder than a sprinter. The scariest bit about it, though, were its teeth. The saber-toothed cat's canine teeth were nearly 7 inches or 18 centimeters long and serrated like steak knives, perfect for slicing through the thick hides of its prey. Just think of a lion with literal daggers hanging from its mouth. Now, these were necessary because, unlike the lions of today, this cat lived in a world full of gigantic herbivores and other formidable predators, making survival a daily challenge. Now for a coyote that could give wolves today a run for their money. When you think of a coyote, it feels like familiar territory, right? We still have them running around in jungles, but boy, have I got news for you. Sometimes familiar animals can have surprising and fearsome pasts, and the Ice Age coyote is a perfect example of just that. Also known as the Pleistocene coyote, this prehistoric creature was a beast compared to the coyotes we know today. It weighed between 33 and 55 pounds, or 15 to 25 kilograms, with some individuals matching the size of modern-day wolves. In contrast, today's coyotes are smaller, tipping the scales at just 22 to 40 pounds, or 10 to 18 kilograms. But the Pleistocene coyote wasn't just larger, it had a thicker, deeper skull, and robust teeth designed for tearing into meat, indicating it hunted larger prey, and had a more carnivorous diet than its modern descendants. While today's coyotes are known for their adaptability and cunning, thriving in urban and rural environments alike, the Pleistocene coyote was a specialist in a world of giants. It had to be tougher and more capable of taking down big game to survive in the harsh, competitive environment of the Ice Age. Also present in that environment was a bison that looked nothing like you've ever seen before. Bison Antiquus roamed North America from about 240,000 to 10,000 years ago. This prehistoric giant was 25% larger than its modern descendants, standing at an impressive 7.5 feet or 2.3 meters high and stretching 15 feet or 4.6 meters long. Weighing in at a whopping 3,500 pounds or 1,600 kilograms, you can bet it took up lots of space in the Ice Age plains. One of the most striking features of the ancient bison was its horns, which were longer than those of today's American bison. It thrived in a world teeming with other massive creatures and formidable predators. So, its size and strength helped it survive against threats from the likes of saber-toothed cats and dire wolves. Its large muscular build and longer legs made it a formidable force on the open plains, allowing it to migrate across vast distances in search of food. These ancient bison are believed to be direct ancestors of the American bison. Fossil evidence indicates that as the climate changed and the Ice Age ended, Bison Antiquus gradually evolved into the smaller but still robust bison we see today. Their diet consisted mainly of grasses, much like their modern counterparts. However, the Ice Age landscape offered a different variety of flora, and these giant grazers had to compete with other megafauna for resources. Luckily for them, their large size allowed them to consume large quantities of vegetation, which was crucial for maintaining their massive bodies. Up next is the ancient walrus a colossal creature that ruled the shallow seas of prehistoric California. In 1980, researchers uncovered the near-complete remains of Gomphotheria pugnax, an extinct giant pinniped in Southern California. 
this magnificent beast lived between 8.5 million to 5 million years ago, during the late Miocene epoch. G. pugnax had a massive 18.5-inch long or 47-centimeter skull, decorated with large upper and lower canine tusks. These tusks weren't just for show. The ancient walrus likely used them to stir up sediment on the seafloor, searching for food like hard-shelled invertebrates, such as mollusks. These acted pretty much like metal detectors searching for hidden treasures. G. pugnax was a huge, heavy-bodied pinniped, boasting a high forehead, particularly in males, reminiscent of the California sea lion. It had small eyes, which might seem unusual, but were perfectly suited to its lifestyle in the murky waters where it hunted. Compared to today's walruses, which already impress with their size and tusks, G. pugnax was a real giant. While modern walruses use their tusks primarily for hauling themselves onto ice and for social interactions, the ancient G. pugnax had a more active role in foraging, using its tusks to navigate and hunt in its environment. Now let's get back on land, where the true ruler of the wilds lived. This was the scimitar-toothed cat. Also known as Homotherium, it was a formidable predator during the Pleistocene era. This ancient feline was equipped with large canine teeth, powerful forelimbs, and a sloping back, making it a specialized hunter capable of taking down large prey. Originally found in Eurasia, this ancient beast expanded its range during the last ice age by crossing the Bering Land Bridge into North America. Fossil evidence of this predator has been discovered at significant sites such as the La Brea Tar Pits in Southern California, as well as in other parts of the United States, including Alaska, Idaho, and Texas. The cat's adaptation for hunting included its large optic bulb, indicating keen eyesight suited for tracking and capturing prey. Its robust forelimbs and sloping back suggest a muscular build, optimized for speed and power during pursuits. Now, while you may sometimes wish for these animals to still be around today, the truth is, encountering a homotherium in the wild would have been a chilling experience. Nevertheless, its presence in North America during a time when mammoths and giant ground sloths roamed suggests it was a key predator in the ecosystem, a hunter among other apex predators of the era. But there was one giant that rarely made any predators prey. Taking it down would have been next to impossible. This was the mastodon. Mastodons or mammut made their grand entrance into North America about 15 million years ago, crossing over the Bering Strait land bridge, long before their more famous relatives, the mammoths. This journey set the stage for a long tenure on the continent. Now compared to mammoths, mastodons were a lot more primitive. Their teeth, for instance, were less complex. They had cone-shaped cusps on their molars, perfect for crunching on the leaves, twigs, and branches of deciduous and conifer trees. Mastodons also had a taste for wetland plants, which were less abrasive than the grasses and terrestrial plants mammoths often consumed. Physically, mastodons and mammoths were quite similar, yet distinct. Both could reach impressive heights between 7 and 14 feet, or 2 to 4 meters, and had shaggy coats to keep them warm in cold climates. However, mastodons were generally shorter and more robust than their mammoth cousins. One of the most striking differences between the two were their tusks. Mastodons had long, curved tusks that could grow up to 16 feet or 4.9 meters in length. In contrast, mammoths had shorter, curlier tusks, giving them a different, though equally impressive appearance. Despite their similarities and differences, both these creatures were iconic megafauna of the Ice Age, roaming the vast prehistoric landscapes of North America. Their presence, diet, and physical traits offered a truly amazing glimpse into the diversity of life that once thrived on our planet. Today, the remains of these majestic creatures continue to tell us more about a bygone era when nightmarish giants roamed the Earth. All these hundreds of thousands of years ago, North America was also home to the formidable Arctodus simus, commonly known as the short-faced bear. This massive bear roamed across diverse landscapes, from forests and plains to tundras and grasslands, extending its range all the way to the subtropical woodlands in Florida. These short-faced bears were giants compared to today's grizzly bears, towering over them by a significant margin. Their size alone would have been enough to strike fear into anyone who encountered them. The male stood up to 3.4 meters or 11 feet tall, and that's almost two fully grown men stacked on top of each other. Now, despite its name, the short-faced bear didn't actually have a short face. The truth is, 
Its face appeared shorter due to its extraordinarily long limbs. These adaptations made it look like a grizzly bear on stilts, with legs that were at least one-third longer than those of modern bears. This unique body structure might have allowed it to run at high speeds, though the exact reasons for its long legs remain a mystery. This massive bear's diet and behavior also remain subjects of ongoing research, but its impressive size and range make it a fascinating creature in the prehistoric world. So, whether it's chasing down prey or foraging for berries, the short-faced bear was undoubtedly one of the most formidable creatures of its time, dominating a variety of habitats across North America. Now on to a more peaceful family of animals, the stunning North American horses. When European settlers arrived in the New World, they introduced horses to a continent that had already known the thunder of hooves long ago. Ancient horses roamed North America from about 50 million to 11,000 years ago, but they vanished at the end of the last ice age. One of the strangest things about this extinction is that they died out in North America, yet managed to survive in Eurasia and Africa, which is why we still have horses and their relatives, donkeys and asses, today. These ancient horses were an important part of the North American landscape for millions of years. They evolved here, adapting to the changing climates and landscapes, and their hooves once echoed across vast plains and forests. The end of the last ice age, however, brought dramatic changes in climate and environment, which along with human activities, contributed to their extinction on this continent. The horses we see today, whether wild mustangs or domesticated breeds, are distant relatives of these North American inhabitants. So, if you think about it, they serve as a living link to the continent's prehistoric past, reminding us of a time when North America was a wild and untamed place, filled with extraordinary creatures, another one of which was the dire wolf. Yes, they don't just exist in Game of Thrones. These creatures were actually real. Long ago, before cities and highways stretched across the land, North America was home to this fearsome predator. These wolves, much bigger than today's grey wolves, prowled through forests and grasslands, leaving their bones scattered in places like California's La Brea Tar Pits and Wyoming's Natural Trap Cave. They were hefty creatures, weighing between 130 and 150 pounds, or 59 to 68 kilograms, about 25% heavier than today's grey wolves. But, despite their size, dire wolves had shorter legs than modern wolves, which meant they weren't built for sprinting races. These wolves also had a pretty unique history. They split off from other wolves about 5.7 million years ago, long before humans built their first homes. Unlike their relatives who traveled between Eurasia and North America, dire wolves stayed put in North America. They also didn't mix with coyotes or gray wolves either, keeping to their own kind and maintaining their genetic distinctiveness throughout their existence. Surprisingly, despite evolving separately, dire wolves behaved much like modern canines. They lived in packs, similar to how dogs, wolves, and coyotes do today. This social structure probably helped them hunt and survive in the ancient wilderness. On a final note, dire wolves were certainly big, but they're not as big as they're shown in Game of Thrones. Still nightmare material though, that doesn't change with the size. But if you think bigger is scarier, we gotta tell you, there's nothing in the world today that comes close to the 3,000 pound sloth. Unlike today's sloths, which spend most of their lives in trees, these megafauna giants like the Eremotherium and Megatherium were ground dwellers. North America was home to several species of giant sloths, with the Eremotherium being among the largest. Found predominantly in the southeastern regions along Florida and the Gulf Coast, as well as in Central and South America, these sloths favored wetter, more tropical environments. They got to be about the size of elephants. Although Eremotherium was huge, it wasn't as big as Megatherium, another giant sloth species found in South America, which dominated South America during the same period. These giant sloths had diverse diets, using their stature and ability to stand on their hind legs to reach high into trees for food. Their adaptability likely contributed to their extremely long survival compared to many other Ice Age mammals. The tales of ancient ground sloths run deep, as once President Thomas Jefferson heard about a strange claw fossil found in Ohio, and he got really curious. So, he sent a bunch of explorers to look for what he thought might be giant lions on their journey west to the Pacific. But it turns out that the claw wasn't from a lion at all. It belonged to Megalonyx, an extinct ground sloth. 
During warmer times called interglacials, megalonyx even made it as far north as the Yukon and Alaska, adapting to different environments. But when it got cold again, these sloths weren't built for the chilly weather, so they headed back south where they originally came from. Similarly, another gigantic beast made its journey from the south to the north of prehistoric America. This was the Glyptodon. It came decorated with an extremely strong shell made of bony plates that acted as its shield against the dangers of the world. The closest living creature resembling it would be an armadillo, but make it colossal. Glyptodon took on a journey from South America to North America long ago. It traveled across a narrow strip of land called the Isthmus of Panama during the Ice Age. This journey took it to new lands, seeking better places to live and find food. When Glyptodon finally arrived in what is now coastal Texas and Florida, it found a paradise. There were lush forests and wide open wetlands where it could graze peacefully. And as a gentle giant that liked to munch on grasses, leaves and plants, that's exactly what it was looking for. But as time passed and the world changed, Glyptodon faced challenges it couldn't overcome. About 10,000 years ago, during shifts in climate and other changes, this amazing creature and its relatives disappeared from Earth. Their extinction is still a mystery today, much like that of the American lion. In the ancient wilderness of North America, saber-toothed cats weren't the only big cats around. Panthera atrox, the American lion, was there to give them tough competition. This majestic predator was not just large, it was among the largest cats ever known. And that's to say they were much, much larger than most modern lions. Standing at an impressive four feet tall at the shoulder and stretching up to eight feet in length, the American lion was slightly larger than today's African lion. These magnificent creatures were not just large, but also incredibly strong and robust. With an average weight of about 500 pounds or 226 kilograms, that's the weight of a fully grown polar bear. But the most amazing thing is, even though they were pretty heavy, these lions were still surprisingly agile and fast. They could go 35 to 40 miles per hour, about as fast as a horse. There aren't many fossil records of this animal, but evidence scattered across North America tells tales of these mighty cats. Their bones and teeth have been unearthed, from the northern reaches of Canada to the southern lands of Mexico. Scientists have long argued over the genetic kinship of these giant cats. Some argue their skulls resembles that of lions, while their jaws show similarities to jaguars and tigers. But one thing we do know is, because of its size and strength, the American lion likely preyed on large herbivores like bison and wild horses. Its powerful physique and fierce hunting abilities allowed it to thrive in diverse environments across the continent. Another prehistoric creature capable of thriving in diverse environments was the giant beaver. Also known as the Castoroides, this beaver was a true marvel of prehistoric North America. Unlike its smaller modern cousin, Castor canadensis, which typically weighs around 44 pounds or 20 kilograms, Castoroides tipped the scales at an impressive 125 pounds or 57 kilograms. That's more than double the weight of today's beavers. These ancient giants roamed across a vast territory, with their fossils found not only in the Great Lakes region, but also as far south as South Carolina and across the American Northeast. They were adaptable creatures, venturing into Alaska and the Yukon during warmer interglacial periods. However, when temperatures dropped, they retreated south to more favorable habitats. Similar to their modern counterparts, Castoroides were expert builders and engineers of their environments. Fossils of both ancient and modern beavers have been found in the same deposits, indicating they shared similar lifestyles. Despite their impressive size, which made them amongst the largest rodents ever known, the giant beavers eventually disappeared from the Earth, likely due to changes in climate and environment, as the Ice Age came to an end. Now on to the most exotic of prehistoric North America's animals, yesterday's camel. These are more famously known as camelops. Now, we often think of camels as this very exotic creature that we associate with very different places, such as sand dunes. But camels are actually native to North America around 44 million years ago, when its relatives first emerged. These early camelids gradually made their way across the continent, from the Canadian Yukon down to Mexico, adapting to various habitats including woodlands, grasslands, and wetlands. Standing impressively at about 7 feet tall, or 2.2 meters at the shoulder, 
and weighing up to 1,764 pounds or 800 kilograms, Camelops was larger than modern camels. However, it's unclear from fossil evidence whether it had the distinctive hump associated with its desert-dwelling descendants. As time passed, some members of the camelid family crossed the Bering Land Bridge into Asia around 7 million years ago, eventually giving rise to the camels we see today. More recently, others journeyed southward into South America via the newly formed Isthmus of Panama about 3 million years ago. These descendants, including llamas and guanacos, adapted and thrived in the South American landscape. Despite their ancient roots in North America, camelops eventually faced extinction. Finally, it's time to reveal the most majestic-looking prehistoric creature of all, the American cheetah. Standing a little taller than today's cheetahs, with a shoulder height of about 2.75 feet or 0.85 meters, and weighing around 156 pounds or 70 kilograms, this feline commanded respect in the whole jungle. Unlike its swift African cousin, the American cheetah wasn't built for sheer speed. Its slightly shorter legs suggested it was better at climbing than racing across the open plains. Despite this, its name, Mirasonus inexpecticus, is rich with meaning. Mira means wonderful in Latin, while asinonyx and onyx come from the Greek words related to claws. This name reflects an earlier misunderstanding about cheetahs not having retractable claws. Inexpecticus in Latin means unexpected, altogether giving the big cat a name that loosely translates to wonderful, unexpected cheetah with immobile claws. The story of the American cheetah unfolds millions of years ago during the Pliocene Epoch, dating back between 3.2 million to 2.5 million years ago. Fossils discovered in present-day Texas provide clues to its existence and behaviors in ancient times. Sadly, like many of its fellow megafauna, the American cheetah vanished from the North American continent around 12,000 years ago. But you shouldn't be too disappointed about that, because if this creature ever caught up to you, it would tear you apart in mere seconds. In the end, the ancient days of North America were pure nightmare fuel. Even fairly innocent creatures like beavers, sloths and horses grew to such colossal sizes that they would have been a danger to any human. And on the other hand, there are characters like the direwolf, saber-toothed cat and short-faced bear that seem straight out of a scary storybook. One that you wouldn't want to read to your children. But over time, things changed. The environment shifted and humans arrived. These changes were too much for these ancient animals, and so slowly they disappeared, leaving behind their bones for us to find and wonder about. But if you could bring back any of these extinct creatures, which one would it be? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and we'll catch you in the next video.